Hi, and welcome to another repaint video. I'm so excited to share this little project because I think it's the coolest doll I've done so far. It's made as a part of a collaboration between me and Curious Workshop, where we both made a doll based on a look by Jupiter. Is it okay to fangirl a little bit when you're going on 30? I mean, it's kind of too late, but still. Kiru wanted to make the black skull one and I decided on the pink one, and by the craft gods he nailed it with his doll, I mean, look at this, it's so amazing. Make sure to head over to his video. I decided to use a Draculaira body and a color me creepy head for my skull. The fish eyes are strong in this one, it's super weird. As you can see here, the body was bleached, but that was fine since I would mess with her skin color anyway. Since she doesn't have any hair, I could start removing the face up with acetone directly. I just wanted to point out that we had Jupiter's permission to make these dolls. Always ask the artist if it's okay, even if one is not selling the end product, you know, it's the kind of polite thing to do. So this is what I have to work with. It's not bad, not bad at all. I love the ears. The first layer and I put down the groundwork, I start with the pastels using pink. I relied a lot on the reference pictures while doing this and I spent a lot of time on the face up to get it right. Here I'm shading the hairline. It's been a while since I enjoyed the whole process of making a doll, there are always some parts that make me procrastinate. Mostly in the clothing department, but I just felt some kind of flow with this one, it was wonderful. Here I started on the teeth. I must say, mirroring the sides was hard, like, really, really hard. I went back and forward, making a tiny step at a time with it, but I still ended up using the eraser pen as much as the black watercolor pencil. Here I'm using black pastels before deciding to save the progress and start on the next layer. Second layer, we're at the dentist's now. I'm trying to whiten the teeth, but it just didn't work that well. We'll have to wait for the army painter to arrive, then I start on the lines. Is it even? I think it's even. The eyes are white, you can see hints of iris on his pictures and I love that, so I filled in with white and used grey on the next layer to create some iris outline. But for now I work more on the lines before I fill in with more black pastels. Third layer, I do the same thing all over again. I am enhancing the black, trying to put more white on the teeth. Finally, I added more pink to some places before I sealed it, so finally it's starting to look like something. Fourth layer, here I started to work on the highlight. I also did some shading with some blue pastels. In the fifth layer, let's bring forth the acrylics. I was so proud of myself at the end, the lines were super thin. If you think this is boring though, you can skip to around 5.45.
And there we go! Wicked! I used some Tamiya gloss varnish on the eyes and in the end the nose. Then I started to work on the body, scraping off seams and preparing for some pastels with a layer of Mr. Super Clear. I wanted the body to have a more yellow tint to it to contrast the head, so I used a lot of pastels to do that. It took some time and patience, but it was so worth it. I decided to use red yarn for the hair, so I start like I usually do. First, twist it around a piece of cardboard, cut it into pieces, and then I tie it to a hanger thing. Usually I use three strands at a time, but since they are so short, I tie them one at a time. That way I minimize the waste too. Then I brush it out before I use my flattening iron. Before I glue the hair, I wanted to put the head back on, but before I could put the head back on, I had to make three incisions inside the neck. Then it was easy peasy lemon squeezy. Nice moving range. Instead of gluing wefts, I glued the hair directly onto the head. This way I get better coverage and I don't get the hair, you know, in a row effect. It, it can turn pretty stripy with the wefts. It's hard to explain. Finally, to get a somewhat normal hairline, I put more hair onto the last glued ones. It turned out pretty cool and it looks rather natural. I left it overnight to make sure it was completely dry. That's the only way to keep me from poking and ruining everything. I then brushed it out and started cutting it with an eyebrow razor. I ended up using my rubber gloves to protect my finger though. To style it, I used some watered down glue. I didn't know what ratio to use, so I was winging this part. Then I used a pencil to paint the hair in shape. I should have started in the back, of course. After some final poking, I was satisfied with the hairstyle, then I decided to make him a coat from a pattern by DG Requiem. It was a complicated pattern, truthfully I almost gave up after reading the instructions, but shame on the one who gives up. So I set into action and tried my best, first tracing the pattern like usual and then carefully following the instructions. Finally I pinned the fabric to cut on fold. This fabric was nice to work with, thankfully. I sew the back, the darts and the sleeves like usual, then I created a color with the help of some iron-on interfacing. It was my first time using this and it was really helpful. There we go! Now it needs some lining. I thought it looked boring, so I added some pink and black striped faux fur fabric. I am so grateful that I live in an era with easily accessible fabric glue. This stuff heals my soul. And helps me sewing. Now the only thing left is sewing the waist, there we go, looks super cool. To avoid the fabric from fraying, I used some more fabric glue. Then I turned it inside out, or the right side out, the outside out, I, I don't know. It looks nice. Finally, I hemmed the bottom. More fabric glue, who would have guessed? I should show you my glue collection. It is getting rather impressive. Finally, I added some details to it, like some kind of cuff thing. If I didn't wear black all the time, I would have wanted one of these in size human. I added some tiny buttons as decorations and then sewed a snap button to the coat to snap it shut. 
I did a lot of thinking about what to make for the lower part and decided on a huge lace skirt. I did take some artistic freedom with the clothes since Jupiter focused pictures on the awesome makeup. Then I went nuts adding details. One red rose for the coat and a bunch of brown roses to the skirt. To make the coat look more natural I used brown and black pastels, smooshing it onto the edges and in the seams. Then I turned to my airbrush. I have this 3M mask while I use it, I don't want to inhale all those toxic particles. I mixed the brown paint and winging it I had no idea how it would look. To give the face up spikes I made them out of polymer clay, unfortunately no nail art spikes were small enough, so I twist it and cut it and then bake it. I'm using paper glue but I changed it to super glue since it didn't stick that well onto the face. Then after drying I dry painted them with silver before I painted them with Tamiya gloss varnish. He got a septum piercing too, I want one of these, but I'm a teacher and I have to hold myself back a little bit. The kids are fine, it's the parents that might have opinions. Then I made a choker, I used nail art pieces for the metal and it turned out so cool. I asked my younger brother if he needed something more on the skirt and uh, he didn't think so, so I added stuff to the coat instead. I love asking my family for taste advice, they are always honest and help the best they can. So I just added the same gold triangles to the roses to bring the skirt and coat together. That was the end of my Jupiter doll. This was probably my shortest video so far and I have no idea why. I mean, I, I didn't have to cut and scrape out hair and I didn't do any heavy body modifications, but still, I hope you enjoyed it. Summer has come at full scale here and the sun has been gifting us with its presence. Hence, I haven't been able to take photos outside. On the other hand, I think a photo shoot inside fitted him better. I named him Magenta by the way, the bad name tradition carries on, but I think it works. Next week he'll get his familiar, which will be so much fun to make. I have to think outside of my fanville box and create something different yet similar. I love it. With that being said, I'd like to thank my patrons. I'm actually sharing Lynn's and Chico's familiars in a couple of days too. They look like little kitten forest creatures and I think you'll like them, whiskers and all. Anyway, this is what I started with, and this is the result. I love it so, so much. Thank you, Jupiter, for giving us permission to make dolls based on your art. I loved every aspect of creating him, and I hope the clothes are acceptable. I just wanted the face up to stand out as much as possible. I hope you have a wonderful day or evening, you know, depending on when you're watching this, I guess. Thank you so much for the love and support. Until next time. Bye!